That was a great idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Alright, bring it in. Let's watch Alyssa work. Yeah. <laughs> 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 install maybe sleep on a couch or something but they gave us a house so we're gonna stay in the house when we're not in the hot tub it's a nice house it's made from uh, straw and it's just amazing everything about it day number two All right, so it's day number two in Texas, and we're going from our temporary home over here to the barn where the plane is, and we're going to put some more pieces onto it. I just already saw some deer out here. We're in the hot tub last night outside. Now, of course, it's uh, 38 degrees right now, but it's going to warm up we were told and uh, we'll keep you posted on all the pieces that are going on the plane good morning it's uh, day number two <laughs> and uh, welcome to your shop oh, hi. yesterday we were able to uh, hang the engine um, we of course mounted it to the airframe first we did use the smaller attaching MS nuts down there like we normally do now because there's not a lot of room we bolted all four points in and uh, we just clamped this top one with a pair of welding clamps that uh, he just happened to have hanging right here just absolutely perfect for the job and then we hung the engine which the only thing there is to install this only washer that gets trimmed a little bit so it doesn't touch the engine but all the, the other ones of course are full size we do now put a quarter inch of spacing down here uh, until we get some new engine mounts with just a little bit uh, more on the bottom to get the angle set up right but of course you're going to check your angle of the engine anyhow it's going to be horizontal with the top of the cage or up to one degree down it's acceptable acceptable as well all right so we got all that done uh did throw the air cleaner on yesterday got some of the hoses and stuff unraveled this engine had been prepared a little bit before it got shipped and then of course we got to put our positive and negative uh, terminals in and we got started on opening up for the harness that's going to go to the ECU. Alan's already installed a shelf back here which is perfect. We're going to use that to mount our contactors and batteries and so forth. So I would say we did quite a bit. We did also fit the nose wheel spacer. <clears throat> it fit quite well. Um, the uh, holes on the sides here are not exactly in line that this comes out a little bit and then back in so we just took a bandsaw and cut that out and because it's just a spacer and we got four holes that are perfect and then we got two that are just in those channels and that gives us the two inch lift that we'd like to have with a cruiser because the Viking engine of course is geared it has a lot of torque so we'd like to run a little bit of a longer propeller than the direct drive engines. Uh, Alyssa has <clears throat> yesterday laid all this out, 
So everything we brought with us for the install is nicely organized, including the tools. And uh, of course, we have a wonderful workshop here with uh, really, really nice lighting, temperatures good in here. He has all kinds of fasteners and Adele clamps and everything you could dream of uh, when you go to someone else's shop to do an installation. So let's get to it. I think we'll start today with just putting the heater okay, in. Okay, so we got the heater mounted. Ran right through here and up here. And then uh, it came in underneath the nice uh, shelf that Alan made here for everything. Made a little bracket and then the only thing left is to, to wire it. People sometimes ask about, do we need grommets going through the firewall? And I guess kind of you would, but we're also what we're doing is we're just not cutting the short the hose short. We're letting it extend through the firewall, which means that uh, the hose itself becomes the grommet, and uh, obviously the clamp is outside of that. So if there's a little chafing into the hose, we're not going to get a leak. Moving on to the throttles next. All right, so the the engine is in as we showed, and we did have to trim just a little bit up here. Uh, we marked everything, took it back apart, trimmed off like a quarter inch. And we did bolt that last after the engine was hanging in order for everything to go together smoothly. Now, something we noticed um, down here, and we noticed it in our airplane, the Super Duty, that if you powder coat this section, you know, between this ring and up to underneath these bars, uh, it doesn't really matter how much grease you put on it, it's going to give you that squeaky sound when you taxi. And it's also true uh, about the top saddle where it goes through the nylon bearing block. So you want to definitely leave that with no powder coat and a thin layer of grease on it um, in order to get rid of that sound. All right, so while Alan is finishing riveting down the shelf, we've been installing the throttle brackets. Those are little pieces that uh, were made up by Viking. They're just little angles like this. I'll show you how to install the cable. These you can actually use even if you got one of those other little training engines. You don't have to have a Viking for them. One nice thing about these throttle brackets is that you can, you don't have to take the nut all the way off the throttle cable. You can install it uh, like after the fact. Just goes through the groove there and pull it. And then you put the lock washer and a nut and then through the firewall and you're done. Now the interesting thing about this house that Alan and Kathy made by themselves is that it is a uh, straw bale house. <coughs> so here's basically how to make one. And just like a kit plane, here's the book of everything that they did making the house. So as anyone that's been through building a house now, it is a huge amount of work. And then of course, if you start adding straw to it and do an unconventional, it's even more work. Let's go outside and take a look at it. Now, of course, out here, every morning so far, there's been deer and other animals. There's a hot tub here, which is up and running, even though it's 38, 35 degrees in the mornings and 80 during the day. You just jump in here anytime, it's already ready to go. The house is gorgeous. They're all uh, built by themselves about 20 years ago. And now they're building a home built plane. Of course, when you have a big house and you're not using it all at this time, you can 
store your Zenith parts anywhere. We've got a nice set of wings here, all built up, ready to go on the airplane that we're working on every day. And I think today we'll probably get the uh, engine started up after the ladies go and get us some oil and and uh, put some more wires in the right places. Day three. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're on day three, approaching the shop. And uh, today, it's the big day, probably get a few more wires and start the engine. Little deer feet. Deer feet? There's a lot of deer around. Marks, <laughs> tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Deer feet. I don't see any this morning. Oh, people are alive. So another morning. Awesome. What are we on? Day number two and day number three? Day two and a half? Three? This is two and a half. Well, I don't it's know. actually one and a half because we started Friday. Friday at, at about three? About 2.30, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yesterday's 2.30 and here uh, we Chinese are dental time. Tooth hurting. Tooth hurting. All right, so we're on day three now. <clears throat> as far as details from yesterday, uh, we did install a gearbox vent bottle. That was all taken care of. Um, the uh, coolant overflow bottle was installed. We did the new radiator enclosure, which we really like. It just bolted right up. So it has two bolts up front by the firewall, which of course are then structural because it goes through the two layers up there. And uh, two in the middle. And then the rear ones go right up against the uh, the stringer here. So seeing that part from the inside of the floorboards, we used a um, low profile structural screw there. And we did the same right in here. So these are the, the hard points basically of the of the airframe and then there's one up front there. So that's nice and sturdy. Uh, we utilize some of the screws that are in this channel here to support our fuel line because we installed that. So we got the fuel line going here and it goes down the firewall, obviously staying away from any kind of chafing. We're gonna support some of this a little bit more once we get uh, all that tied up or completed. But then the fuel line goes here. We use a 90 right here with some ADL clamps to kind of make everything nice and sturdy around the nose wheel. We don't want any chafing there. And then we have it ADL clamped uh, throughout the channel to the back. And it goes then through, which we've shown in other videos, before the landing gear it goes up into the tunnel. And then Alan had already done the fuel system in the back, him and Kathy together. And so it comes up through there and then it goes back to the filter and then back to the header tank. And they're considering this area as a serviceable area. Rather than riveting everything, there's gonna be covers uh, so they can get to this area. Uh, I think uh, the parts get riveted in, but then there are access panels for service. Now, once we had that done, uh, we also physically mounted the ECU to the shelf. We didn't plug in the connectors yet because we want all the electrical systems to be done prior to powering up the ECU, so there's no chance of any shorts. Uh, we've got our oil cap marked here that it has no oil, so that we can put that in today prior to starting it. And we did put the pass-throughs here for the ground cables, which are grounded right here on the engine. Uh, we also ran our positive cable and our ECU wire loan through for now. On the inside, we did the same, the power cable, the red one, uh, as in the red piece here, both cables are red. We didn't have any black, but it's just a short run and it does terminate at the ground lug. And uh, that then powers up, or gets power from the power bus, uh, which is, right here engine positive bus 
and that then gets power from the output of each of the contactors and then we wired from the batteries to the input side of the contactors and we wired from the ground to the ground bus at both locations so everything is like tied to the buses then we did install the starter relay and we ran wires from that to the starter switch we powered up the uh, copper bus that powers all the uh, switches. We ran actually two wires, one at that end and one at this end just for redundancy. And they go back to our power bus. And then we've got um, more wires from the relay. This yellow one goes out to the starter through our terminal strip. And so we were just uh, mounting components and getting things ready. Uh, I think we showed the throttles already. They're all done. Today we're going to have to install the Viking View. We've got our, our cables run. We have to install the actual brain box for the Viking View. We did uh, temporarily install our switch panel from Viking with the Viking View and all of our switches, which are going to be your contactor, contactor. And uh, we've got alternator fuel pump, fuel pump and the instrumentation for the Viking View in this. And then we got a 25 amp breaker over here for the cranking the starter. So we got a lot done and uh, we'll get to it again today. Uh, probably in a couple hours we'll start the engine and then we have to wire some uh, fuel pumps and Viking View and things like that. So we got some things bundled and working. We got our Viking view with some main switches for the batteries. Alternator, fuel pump working, fuel pump working, instrumentation working. And uh, then we also have the uh, heater working. Coming together. All right, so we're going to start the cowling installation. Uh, get a Home Depot bucket lid or something like that. It's 12 and a quarter in diameter. <clears throat> and just draw that and find the center of it and then cut that out of a half inch uh, piece of plywood or press board or something. All right, preliminary testing of uh, cowling fit. We've got our sole horse out. Now it's uh, moving it into place. We've got the uh, disc put in, a 12 and a quarter inch disc in the front. And that's uh, our alignment tool right now. We are trying to clear the gearbox up front. We're trying to clear the new uh, radiator attachment. We might want to trim a little more. Uh, that's okay. So we do need a outside space to cut all this fiberglass. Trimming this up so it will fit. And we've got a face shield and Dremel tool and a dust mask. So that's going pretty good. All right, so we're uh, removing the the peak coach and we're going to drill it up to a number five rivet. This, this one turned out real nice. It's laying nice and flush. We did do the opposite hinge thing here where the it's, the hinge goes out here and in here. So, yeah, we got to add one to the top. So, and we did get it to fit nicely around our wooden template. In fact, this one, we just used a half inch wooden template. Put it right on the flange without the spacer. And then we put all this on the outside just to hold it in place. By the time we get the spacer behind this and the spinner bulkhead has an aft facing bulkhead, the gap is going to be pretty nice. So this will give us, uh, by putting a half inch directly on the prop flange, 
uh, once we have the spinner bulkhead and the prop extension on the engine, as we can see later, we'll get a good gap in between the cowling and the spinner. For the exhaust, what we did is we took this ruler, actually on the floor here, we laid it next to the muffler, and we just kind of lined up these marks and cut this and bent it to the same angle as the exhaust. And then we're going to get another piece. I'm going to slide that up and down when we get it into the airplane. We're going to do that now. Just to kind of see where the uh, where the hole is going to be. We already measured from the firewall out to where, where the exhaust was going to go through. Which was 17 and a half. Then we put these there and we slid this down. And we got a mark right there. And we'll just see if that works. All right, so with 17 and a half from the firewall, and then using our bent ruler stick, we were able to get it right on the money, other than a little bit of trimming for clearance to the heat. Obviously, don't forget to put your oil in. Zero W20, we use Mobile One synthetic, and uh, fill it to the marks on the dipstick. Of course, if you have a tail dragger, you wanna be careful that you uh, fill it level first and then see where the marks are. Should take around five quarts or four and a half if there's already oil in the filter. Day three, and we are going to, uh, of course, today is cold and windy, and today's today we're going to be running it and setting prop pitch and everything, but it'll still be a good day. We just had our coffees and walking to the shop. Another morning, and uh, last night or yesterday, we, we did quite a bit. We got her up to this stage. Engine is in, bottom cowling is fitted. Um, this is now the new style cowling. We have one where the radiator's on the bottom and then we have one where the radiator sits under the belly like we used to. Uh, this is the first installation of that. So we've got nice lines going on. <clears throat> right here we're discovering, well, we kind of knew about it, but we put a little piece of white tape here to blend this in. So this is going to now be standard on the cowlings. We'll fiberglass that in and put it in the mold so it'll have a nice transition. Also, the Viking aircraft engine's lettering will be at the bottom rather than on the top. So, but all in all, uh, very happy with that. It has a very streamlined look and should give the airplane some additional speed. Now, as far as details of yesterday's uh, installation, um, did quite a bit right in this area. Uh, I did put a paper towel here just because this is now temporarily mounted and we don't want to short our copper bus at the bottom there to the uh, shelf that was put in here. So basically, um, as far as a quick install thing here, we got a power cable to one side of the uh, power bus. That's a heavy cable because that's a uh, number six because that turns the starter. The batteries, like I've said before, uh, there's no provision to have or we don't need uh, dual batteries in order to have twice the battery capacity of any other airplane. There's no need for that. We just want redundancy, meaning that two batteries makes one battery. And with that philosophy, this airplane is set up and wired for two batteries during starting, and then they get separated during flight in order to have a standby battery. So we're running number 10 wires here because there's two number 10 wires, which makes it like a number seven gauge that will power the main bus for starting. So the positive then goes to the input side of the contactor. Positive goes to the input side of the contactor. The diode that is specified in the diagram to go on the contactor, the stripe of the contactor goes to the positive input side. 
on both of the contactors. The output side of the contactor then powers the power bus here and the same over here, it powers the power bus here, which means to the bus we now have equivalent of a number seven cable, which means that if both batteries are on, we can then feed the starter through the number six. That's like their primary wiring. Of course, on the outside, we've talked about that before, um, the positive number six goes to the starter and then from the starter down to the alternator with a number 10 or a number six if you prefer. And then as far as grounding the engine for starting, we do need a couple of uh, grounding cables. We are using now the grounding straps, which are flexible and we have redundancy there. Now, <clears throat> in addition to that, uh, we did mount the computer. There's no wiring to be done there other than plugging it in. I usually plug it in at the end when everything is done in order to safeguard the computer for any mistakes uh, during the rest of the wiring. The uh, DB9 connector that comes from the computer harness is just tied away. That's only used for programming or for a data logger if needed or desired. We mounted the Viking View brain box back here. Uh, one thing we are utilizing is a feature of these shelves that we put in the Zenit airplanes is we think of it as a two-dimensional uh, or three-dimensional space. So rather than having all the cables maybe running on the top, of course we have a lot of them or most of them, when we have excess cabling, uh, we drill and put uh, grommets in here and the extra cabling is then later on uh, bundled on the bottom. So this will then be all bundled up and tied up underneath. That way we can have a nice clean installation up on top and anything that's excess or we want to route from one side of the board up there to the other, we can go down through a grommet all the way across and then back up again. This extra wiring doesn't do us any good and uh, what we want up here is a nice organized uh, area where we later can then troubleshoot if we have to because of any issues. Here's the pass-through. The pass-through is for the computer wire bundle and also then for all the biking view cables. As you can see, we did exactly that. Rather than running these across all these items over to here, we went down through the grommet and then back up through grommets over here and it made the area on top much cleaner and organized. For the Viking View, we have the power in on the left, then the next one is the data cable that goes uh, to the instrument itself so that the information can be transfer, uh, transferred to the instrument and we can see it on the screen. And then we have a few other ones over here, uh, one, two, three, four of them, and those would then be things like your fuel pressure sender, which comes from the back of the airplane. In fact, uh, we can see the cable running right here and it's gonna be tucked away and it goes to the back and eventually to the fuel pressure transducer in the back of the airplane. We also then have three other ones, which are the three we saw over here, one, two, three, and those would then be gearbox temperature, uh, coolant temperature, and oil pressure. And that's really all there is to the biking view as far as the main cabling. Now we also do need to power it up, which uh, like this first one here, then goes over to the uh, switch on the left, which is our avionics, or in this case, for now, just the instrument uh, switch. And uh, that one, because of the fact that these are pre-made cables, at some point we ended up uh, splitting it uh, and then separating the wires from it so that we could run the grounds over to our grounding bus. Um, actually, the ground for the Viking View is this one, and it comes from the Viking View over there, and it goes onto this terminal strip, and it goes to the Viking View only wire from the ECU. So that is not going to go to any kind of a ground. You basically tie the Viking view only wire to the ECU ground wire. And then the warning there is don't, don't add any other grounds to that. Uh, this just goes right through from here to here so that this becomes the ground for the Viking view. And that's just so we can have a clean ground from the com computer rather than grounding the Viking view 
to the grounding bus and then possibly get a dirty ground which will make could make the RPM signal in the Viking view erratic. So just do it this way. The uh, starter relay has different colors of wires. You can look at the back of the starter relay and write down when, it, when it's disconnected the numbers on the relay and correspond them to different colors. In this one, the white one goes to the starter terminal, the S terminal of the ignition switch. The yellow one goes to the uh, starter itself on the engine, which is a wire that's provided in the wire bus. The uh, white and then the blue, of course, is the power to the relay and goes to the 25 amp breaker. So all in all, that's uh, uh, what we've done. Uh, the, the last thing uh, we did over here is we temporarily wired the heater so that we can have a fan that has off and then uh, two fans up and one fan down with a 5 amp breaker. Now the wiring of that switch, there is a diagram for that, but let's just talk about that in a few seconds here. You basically are going to take your two ground wires from the heater, heater then being installed right here, and there's one from each fan, so those will just go to the negative uh, terminal bus, grounding bus. That provides the ground. Now you want to switch the positives in order to be able to have one fan, no fans, or two fans. So these are the two positive leads from the heater. Now as you can see, one goes to the top of the switch here, and one goes to the bottom of the opposing corner, and then there's a little jumper from there up to here. So this is what's shown in the wire diagram. But physically looking at it, that's what it's doing. A single one up here, one to the far corner back there with two wires coming out of it, and then little jumper goes up back up here again to the opposite side. And then the power input to the switch comes from the your avionics power and as you can see um, the power then goes first to the breaker the 5 amp breaker and then the output of the breaker you put two wires in it and you power both sides of the switch here and here of course the diagram will show this I just thought I'd physically show it in the video if you uh, are confused about how that would work today is a new day and we're going to complete the airplane. We're also going to mount the propeller. Uh, we did start the engine just briefly last night. Uh, it fired right up. We have uh, the Zero 020 oil in the engine, uh, Mobile One synthetic. We also have the eight ounces of gear oil in the front here. The gear oil will fill the um, sight glass and then another three ounces so it's a total of eight five would fill it to the top of the sight glass and then an additional three ounces the latest style as far as a gearbox breather system there's just a little fitting on the back of the gearbox right there and that's a nice place to vent it because there is no oil coming out but even though uh, we still run a hose to our gearbox venting bottle back here because even the slightest amount of mist from the gearbox you don't want it to get on your engine and smell and all that because gearbox uh, oil or gear oil does smell so we vent it through this little cap you probably will never see any oil in there or you might see a couple of drops this is not a bottle where you would fill your gearbox it's just a venting reservoir so that the oil can stay in the gearbox we mounted our coolant only NPT uh, coolant bottle down here and that is uh, lower than the cap up here and we do that so that we can remove the cap if we wanted to without coolant overflow uh, by having the bottle lower it still works the same way because it's under a pressure suction system uh, coolant will push out into the bottle and in the beginning air will push out into the bottle as well and vent off and then as the engine pulls back down it'll, the coolant will draw back into the engine block and eventually all the air will be pushed out and it would be replaced by the coolant. 
All right, so we're gonna get to today's job, which was fitting the uh, top cowling. We're real happy about the bottom cowling. We were able to get enough clearance between our flywheel and the bottom fiberglass part here. We were able to get our hinges in real nice, flat up against the cowling. We did separate them into little sections. We did that on both sides. We have pretty much uh, an inch, uh, an inch and a half or so from here up on this cowling. And that's the same on the other side. We were real careful as we, when we were fitting it, that we were able to center it on our wooden uh, plate that we put up here, both top and bottom. And we were lucky at the end to have a nice looking and centered area. Up here is another place where on this particular cowling, you have to trim this back a lot. This lip that goes around here cannot stay that way all the way. It will be there 90% of the way. And then up front here, it's relieved in order to clear the front of the gearbox. The exhaust right here has an exit. So what you do with that is measure from the engine out and from the firewall. And uh, we also showed you a little template that we used to try to get the hole in a, as close of an area as we could and then worked it up with enough clearance around the exhaust that we have provision for a little bit of heat being generated and not burning our fiberglass. All right, let's get to mounting the top cowling. All right, so we've got, we pre-installed the throttle cables earlier, but now as the, uh, as the panel's going in, in fact, this panel's gonna be cut out. We're only gonna leave, you know, about, a, about an inch or so all the way around the edge here but that's for the little bit in the future. And then we're gonna have panels that go on top of that. Um, but uh, we had installed throttle cables with these brackets and a little bit of relief has to be made here on both sides. And then these can be put back in with the uh, AN3 bolts. So let's do that and get a picture of it. that have been watching uh, Viking aircraft engines the last few months, you've seen a uh, trend as in installations. We've shown installation videos of the Viking 130 engine in a variety of Zenit aircraft. We love working with the Zenit type of aircraft for a lot of reasons. <laughs> and uh, this was just another reason. <laughs> be it a high wing, a low wing, or whatever. Now, Alyssa, what's so special about this particular airplane and the location that we're at right now? Um, I love your pop quizzes. Uh, it's probably my favorite. Um, one thing that's, okay. One thing that's new is the cat. Um, one thing that's really new is this is the first time that we've done an on-site installation. That being said, you know, the typical installation used to be you haul your trailer, you haul your uh, your airplane down on a trailer, preferably without wings. We do the installation, you go back home, but that becomes quite a big ordeal for certain people, especially if they're located in farther parts of the world. But in, in this case, we've flown to Texas and we've done the entire installation here within um, Kathy and Alan's uh, home and you know in their shop with their tools. and. It's something that we plan on offering to, to everybody as long as they have, you know, everything necessary. And um, it makes it a really, it makes it a really, you know, a fun time. And it gives us a, a chance to also bond, get to know our customers, get to really explain to them one-on-one -on -one a lot of the operations of the engine. And then of course they don't have the hassle and the time and they're still in their home and they can be here, they can be a part of it. They don't have to be a part of it. Those options are more available, so. That's the idea is to slowly expand what we do to make offerings um, easier for everyone out there. 
And even if you don't want the on-site installation, you have the ability to do, I guess, what we're uh, drop-in prop, if you want to call it that, where you can have a lot of the things pre-made and pre-done to make your installation even easier as well. So there's a lot of different options available. There's nothing to stop you from getting it done yourself. There's nothing from stopping you from having us installing it and nothing from stopping, you know, your build in general. So that's, that's our overall goal. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there was a lot of information at one time. One thing I did understand was the part about that it's preferable to, to tow your airplane to Viking without the wings on. Preferably. Yeah. Thanks. What about it? <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the Texas movie team from. <laughs> All right. Well, we we this is actually our last night here, and it's been so much fun. Uh, we're in the uh, cowboy capital of the world, and. Um, <laughs> Alan and Kathy is here with us and we were invited here. We're so lucky to have been invited because we had a great time uh, in doing this installation, but more importantly, in meeting uh, nice people and making new friends. Now, um, how did you, Alyssa, meet up with Alan and Kathy? How did this all happen? Um, well, I guess they initially you know, bought their engine um, in Sebring. Uh, actually, it wound up being the 15th annual Sebring show in Florida, it wound up being the last Sebring show in Florida, so it was nice that they got to visit us. And then um, over the past year, you know, they, they did want the installation done, so it was all about timing, and it became more difficult over time, and we happened to be, you know, kind of planning a trip to Texas anyway, and um, they said, well, can you, do, can you do the installation here? And we said, you know what? Why not? So, you know. And this was something that we had never tried before, and and uh, <clears throat> I would say so far uh, it, it it was a success, and uh, and we'd have to see what the, our customers and new friends think <laughs> about that. <clears throat> but uh, who are you uh, as far as uh, <laughs> that's, that's a loaded question. <laughs> our, our, who are you? As our as our new uh, friends and customers. Uh, uh, what what is your background uh, as far as uh, like let's just skip everything in life and go to aviation okay what what would the uh, like how for instance you kathy how well how have you been involved with aviation in the past and and how did you end up with this little kit plane okay well i am not a pilot that's um, a good start now alan who are <laughs> <laughs> that's all I need to say. <laughs> no 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 <clears throat> no go from there no, I am not a pilot but i enjoy flying with alan we've had a plane in the past we started to build 20 years ago, didn't get to finish it. Um, every day I'd go in the office and you go, oh, it's a wonderful day to fly. And I said, finally, I just said, buy the kit, let's do it. So that's kind of how we got started, I think. Okay, so this was a, a kind of a long-term dream or, or always being interested in aviation. Absolutely. And from what I understand with Alan, uh, you guys uh, do a lot of different things from kayaking to boating to flying to vacationing. You haven't done a cruise yet, but... No, so. we have not done a cruise yet. But yeah. you don't do a Norwegian cruise. <laughs> That's right. Now, you, you're also a, a professional team together in, in the, as, as far as work. Yes. And you have been together for many, many years. Yeah, 43 years. 43 and years, yeah. He's a chiropractor and I run the office. And okay. So we're together all the time. Okay. And where did you guys meet? We met in Houston on a volleyball court at my church. Oh, nice. So, that's All right, wonderful. And Alan, uh, yourself, uh, why, why, what, what makes you like aviation? The freedom. I mean, it's simple. It's the freedom. I feel different when I'm in the air. But how about like the freedom of being uh, like in this uh, garage uh, hammering rivets? <laughs> <laughs> when she said she got tired of me whining, and she finally said, buy an airplane. And I, I think the next morning. I so this is like a great dream. Like, like having a woman or the one that you love say that, you know, honey, go and buy an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> no. and, and that's true. But, you know, we, we were looking at, at new and I, I don't want to spend $800,000 on a new Cirrus or $400,000 on a new 172. And you've kind of had the high, uh, the, the fly 
high and go fast thing. But a Comanche 250, mm -hmm. and we, you know, it's the feeling that I had was I was always in a rush in it, and you had to go somewhere. In mm -hmm. other words, it was it was trips. Great machine, but I missed the low and slow. Right. And so we chose the Zenith 750 Cruiser. Our missions are 200 miles, 250 miles to see family and go to property that we've got out in Big Bend. And yeah, I'm sorry, but this this will only do 120. Yeah, I know. I know. So we'll, we'll have to just enjoy the sights. we got the bubble canopies we can see. So you ran into Roger at Zenith. We did. And he convinced you that a 701 was too small. I got convinced before that. We have a, an acquaintance who let me sit in one, and I couldn't even fit in the thing. Okay. Uh, so we made a trip up to Zenith, and I was fully expecting to get a 650 because of the cruising and the mission. And I sat in it and it just didn't feel right to me. And okay. I sat in the 750 and fell in love. So you were saying like, like we all love about these high wing Zeniths and, and maybe the few of us that have seen the light as in the cruiser has a good combination of being able to land on grass relatively slow but at the same time, being able to do 120 over the ground and, and go to see relatives and family and, and things like that. For us in Texas, we're largely a private property state as opposed to, you know, Idaho and Nevada and, and Utah and the places where there's a lot of wide open public lands. We don't have that here. It's all private. So you could so, get shot having a 750. Yes, no so a 750 could. stall here is almost like a uh, yeah, death could. sentence. So yeah. the stall really is... is <clears throat> I mean, it would be fun, but it's not practical. <clears throat> so that's interesting. Um, with the Comanche and then now having a Zenit, uh, of course, uh, you guys did the RV-12, I mean, the RV-6 many years ago prior to the quick build kits and all that. Uh, how is that compared to the experience of now having this cruiser and... Uh, building that with pull rivets and and uh, a complete kit and so forth how is that how is it going together and who is really doing the work <laughs> i'm gonna let him answer that you know the, the 6a the, any of the vans are great airplanes and we started it and then, then we had kids and then we she made me build a house and you know all the things that just it wind up getting stuck away and i just never really got back into it uh, and then they developed the seven, and I was thought about that, and and I, but then it really got down to the the low and slow. I mean, RVs are great airplanes; you can't deny it. Right. Uh, maybe one of these days an RV fourteen's in the picture for me, but I really want the low, slow, fun. This is experience. An easier build though than that. We didn't have, you know, we don't have to measure every rivet. We don't have to. You know, you pop up the rivet and it's great. I can, I can say here, I can do this, go start something else, you know, so. And so, so, really so this. you're having fun doing yeah. it. Yes. And how is it working as a uh, husband and wife team? I mean, you did this on several projects. You worked together, you built a house together, you raised a family together, and uh, now you're Zenith editing together. <laughs> Is that so, a word? <laughs> <laughs> it is now. It is now, that's right. So, how is it working as far as working together on a Zenit? The majority of the time, it's wonderful. We have a good time doing it together. And we, nice. We have our moments, and I go in and sew, and do my <laughs> quilting, and then I come back out, and when we're good. But uh, I think that's just, you know, being with somebody all the time. But the majority of time, it is, I like seeing the progress. I like doing it together. We, we enjoy being together, so. Yeah. Now, it's your first home-built aircraft other than starting an RV-6. So what do you feel about the progress is be, that's being made and uh, the late nights of, uh, you know, laying up, not thinking about the plane and not getting enough sleep and stuff? It's not going as fast as I would like because I see these components getting done and, and I said, let's rip it. Let's put it together. And he's going, wait a minute, just slow down. We have to do all this. And I know one day it's going to be within a week after we get parks painted and everything, it's going to be a plane, you know, pretty quickly. So it's moving along. The frustrating part for me is there's no sequence. Uh, and I really miss that. I, 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 the only regret that I have, and apparently this is true with all of the small, uh, uh, plane manu get plane manufacturers. They just they just don't sequence. 
uh, for people who don't know any better. I don't know when to run the wires. I don't know when to run a particular rudder cable or, or, or what have you. And there's nothing that says do it in this order. Uh, I mean, the manual is fine to a point, but there's so many other things that the kit manufacturer leaves to home builders. And if you're new, you just don't know. So that's, I, that's why I've enjoyed having this done with you guys yeah. is because I guarantee you what took you three days would have taken us a year. At Easy, least. hands down. And I think that leads no me doubt. into a question to um, what what overall made you make the decision to have us do the installation and, and, and fly out here and, and come do this? What was the big determining factor in that for you? For me is I am I'm ready to fly. I'm right, I mean, we're, we're not as young as we were when we were doing the RV. And that was a project and that was something he really wanted to do. And he yeah. did it. I didn't do a whole lot on that. This one, I want to get out and I want to experience it. And what would you like this plane to do for you and your family? I would like to be able to go for a day and just go, let's go have lunch someplace and come home. Go be able to, you know, my mother's getting older and I'd like to go visit her more often. And we can do that on an afternoon now. How know. far away is your mom? She's, um, what, three and a half hours from here. So two, 260 miles. To Houston. The way here. you drive, it's, it's <laughs> four hours. <away. laughs> well, we're talking uh, when the plane is done now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's got an airfield right, ne an airport right next to her. And, you know, again, it's VFR mostly. and, and so, so it's perfect then to, to, to use Absolutely. this plane to go and see your mom. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But and, I also <laughs> like the, the idea of um, when we had the Comanche, it was kind of fast that we would go on, you know, with the, with the fly group and go meet at different restaurants and things like that. And that was always fun to do, something different. And do you think the Comanche was a better match for what you want the plane to do? Or do you think this might be a better match or the same? Or um, Have you ever flown in a Zenit? Only with Roger that one time. He's, he's, the, he's the number one Zenit flyer. And, and Alan told him, he said, you take Kathy up first. And she comes home, comes down with a smile on her face. That's the one. And I said, that's the one. I love the way it feels. It felt like a little sports car on the ground, you know, and it was a lot of fun. So he's, he didn't even hardly have to fly it because he said, if I said it was okay, we would kick it. That's right. That's, 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 that's true. That's right. Now the sports car thing, you, you, don't you drive a Prius? <laughs> okay. Let's not get personal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Unfortunate length that I do. <laughs> and this will get just as good a gas mileage or better. <laughs> well, it's a Honda it's a Fit. Honda. Yeah, right. it's the most uh, economical Honda engine there is. Um, all right. So now <clears throat> we showed up and we were supposed to fly in here, but we didn't because um, there was some weather. And um, well, you did fly in them commercially. commercially. Yeah, but we were supposed to come here in our little cruiser uh and that that of course is the drawback of having your own little vfr plane is that if the weather is there and you have to be there then you can't but flying home built planes are for fun mm -hmm. so because the weather wasn't cooperating we just jumped on an airline and we're here and we're having fun with you guys and we got a couple extra days out of it and all that mm -hmm. now why uh the viking car engine conversion engine i mean most people, not most people, because things are changing, but there is a rumor on the internet that car engines can't fly <laughs> and that it doesn't work. And um, I haven't heard that. See, oh, you missed that part. Uh -oh. I missed that. <laughs> there sure are a lot of them doing what you just said they can't do, I guess. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we've found too. You know, our business is really, really golden. Um, really well and it, it's because of people like yourself and it's because of uh, the fact that Zenit is very open to using a car conversion engine which of course now is a super modern Honda engine as if you know if you went to the showroom tomorrow and you looked at a Honda Fit or a Honda Civic car engine it would be a beautiful engine with all kinds of high technology things and there's no reason that that wouldn't be suitable for an airplane. And this used, these used to be common questions that we would get all the time. And the questions are even disappearing now because 
Viking has been selling more engines than UL. Viking has um, been uh, building a community of wonderful Zenit builders like yourself. And Alyssa has been I instrumental that, in I that. I think it comes down to the bottom line is at some point, you know, we have over a thousand engines out there now and a large amount of those flying. The reliability is proven. The hours are on the engine. The performance is proven, especially on this airframe. And the fact that you can get all the parts um, no matter where you are. I mean, you guys are kind of out in the boondocks a little bit. Um, you can you can get everything. Um, you're not stuck being a slave to the manufacturer, and I, and I think that is a very important aspect that we do offer. Um, so we're offering the newest technology, but at a you know we still do maintain the fact that we, we can ship next day. We have a full kit, and we are still the most affordable option out there um, with no with no drawback. So we show up here in Texas, and then the nice thing for me was that we were first of all. The hostility, I mean, the hospitality. The <laughs> <laughs> hostility. Uh, I grew up in Norway. <laughs> the hospitality has been wonderful. First of all, um, Kathy and Alan decided a while back that they wanted to move out of their beautiful house that they built 20 years ago, which is about 200 feet from this nice uh, hangar home that they have now. But they gave us the house. <clears throat> and the hot tub. And the hot tub. <laughs> so we're gonna make some kind of a little competition. If this if this kind of works if this works out as far as Yeah, if we're gonna be doing like installs remote from our own hot tub, we're we're gonna have to have uh the right tools and the right hot tub and the right temperature in the shop and proper lighting and the, the setting the bar really high on this first installation. <laughs> well, we've yeah. enjoyed having you all here. It's been so much fun. Well, we showed up, and then uh, what did we do the first day? What did we came in? Or what, what do you think, Alan? What did we do the first well, day? We had, well, we uh, came in. It was like a half day, right? Yeah, yeah it was a half was day. We, we got to at the airport. We went and had lunch, and we were... We hung the engine. Yeah. We basically yeah. took yeah. the engine out of the crate. Yes. Uh -huh. Unpacked, organized. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I was That's amazed right. because, I mean, the it was like all of a sudden in like two hours, there's an engine, there's an engine on our yeah. plane. <laughs> you yeah. know, and I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm ready to do this. So I didn't do a whole lot. I watched a lot. We did a lot, and then we watched from chairs sometimes, <laughs> drank some wine, yeah, read a yeah, book, you yeah, know. Yeah. So what made you, you guys make the decision that, you know, we're just going to have Viking come and put this thing in? Uh, and, and I know from your perspective, uh, Kathy, you were saying that, you know, we, we want to kind of build a plane, but at the same time, we love to fly. Mm -hmm. So you've made maybe a list of things that are important to you, and, and one of them is to get this thing done, and another one might be to have it done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have maybe certain things that you love to do and certain things you don't can care less about. Right. So... Um. I mean, there were certain things that, I, like I said, I wanted to get it done quickly. I mean, we did the fast build for the fuselage and everything. And I, at first I went, oh, I don't know. But he said, that's going to save us 400 hours, which or something. something like that. And it saved us a lot more because yeah. we're slow. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, you know, neither one. You're of not us. slow. You're particular. There you go. Uh, we, and no, that is slow. true. No, yeah. you're particular. That's true. Um, but neither one of us are mechanics. You know, and that's an important part of the the build. You know, and I can the the thing that I realized I didn't know what I didn't know about this. I mean, I can learn how to rivet. I've learned that. I can learn how to read blueprints. But when it comes to this mechanical stuff. I don't have the, the knowledge, and I don't want to learn on my own uh, life here. I'd rather pay somebody who's an expert to do it. Mm -hmm. And when we chose this, that's why we chose to do this uh, yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. And it just was fortuitous that you were able to come here and, and work in our shop. You know, the cost of this is worth every penny. Absolutely. And I don't mean just the, the engine and all the things that go with that. I'm talking about having you guys do it. I cannot mm -hmm. recommend it highly enough. Absolutely. And Alyssa makes up for a lot of other shortcomings in this. Movie, <laughs> but um, it's really, uh, it's really good. What did you just say? What did you just say about I me? I make up for all your shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I said it. <laughs> no, I can. I'm I'm sure. 
mean, you guys, we're, we're having fun. It's, this is great. And I think the learning curve with this, there are so many little things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write them down sometime this week, about fit and finish of this that I would have been on the phone for a day going, wait, can I do this? Hey, wait, can you, you can cut I that off? That? Can, can I bend that? Can, can you do that, that like that? <laughs> and I would literally be just on the phone, on the phone, on the phone, because I don't know any better. And then I watch you do it, and I went, oh, so I'm done. You know, that's, that it makes total sense. I didn't know you could do that. Now I know. Yeah. So I've learned, I mean, this was a, a, an education, well worth the money in and of itself, whether there's an engine installed or not. So, so we came in here, and uh, you had already done the fuel uh, tank, yeah. and, and Kathy had been up in, in the hell hole back there and okay. actually held the nuts and the, and the bolts and made that all work. Mm -hmm. So you definitely work together, uh, which saved us the work of installing the header tank. So that was a nice, nice thing when we came. Um, we also had prepped the engine prior to shipping. So the engine that showed up already had uh, the sensors for the Viking view and the hoses for the heater. And those things were already pre-installed. So that saved us a little bit of time. It, yeah. Now we have, uh, <clears throat> we're back on the scene. Now, <clears throat> fix your hair. Now we had a little break here and, and you said you were what? I was thrilled that y'all are here. I, I mean, I... You... And that was amazing because, I mean, the phone almost died and I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, seriously, because we got so much accomplished this weekend. It and was fun. It was fun, and we've had a great time with y'all. Yeah. And you know, y'all yeah. are wonderful. Yeah. And, and you do. You're a great team. You Thank really you. are. Yeah. We have. A, we do have a lot of fun doing all this, and I think that, and that goes back to, and I, I preach this over and over and over again, is that more than just being customers or people, we make a lot of friendships. We learn a lot. We grow a lot, mm -hmm. and every person we meet in this lifetime. But, you know, we build that community, and, and that's the fun part. Right. To me, it, that's the fun part. I enjoy that yeah. more than he likes the engine and making him fly and stuff. But I enjoy the interaction. Yes, and we got a lot of interaction this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I 100% I, I agree myself. Of course, I'm more mechanical and less people person than Alyssa. <laughs> but, but as I'm, you know, getting younger, <clears throat> I'm realizing that... Uh, there's a lot to be said about, you know, uh, well, the ultimate as far as or the final conclusion of everything we do in life isn't about, you know, making the best engine that people can fly and be happy with. Well, that's nice. But then if you can combine that with, uh, you know, knowing those people that are flying that engine and combining your business and your passion for aviation and be able to have friends along the way that become your customers slash friends. And now we're back on line <clears throat> here in Texas and it's uh, day number three. Yeah. And uh, Alan, uh, exactly what did we do this week? As oh, far gosh. as, and, and Kathy too, because uh, I know when I don't remember, I ask uh, Alyssa. Yes, go ahead. Well, we got the up. engine, the, the motor mount on first, engine mount on first. Um, how did that go? Very well. Uh, you know, the one little thing that I noticed right off the bat was the little top bracket, this thing right here. Yeah, that structural thing yeah, that holds it all together. That structural thing that kind of holds You cut it in half when we got it here because it didn't fit. Now, I'd have been going, well, you can't do that, but apparently you can. Trim to fit. You tr it's a trim to fit, <laughs> but I wouldn't have known that. Um, so... You know, the other thing that impressed me too, and, and just I just wanted to say this too, is y'all's patience. Because we asked a lot of questions and you took the time. There were, I never sensed any kind of, you know, short fuse with us at all. Oh, no, we we truly that. say it when we say we enjoy doing what we do. I believe you. We, yep. we believe really you. do. It's not, it's not just a business to us. I mean, it is, but it's also what we love. It's what hopefully one day, you know, cross your fingers, not everyone's kids want to do what you do. Yeah. But, you know, it... it carries on and, and moves forward mm -hmm. but at the same time we enjoy it we love it you know it's and we do well, we do show. we do have a lot of patience <laughs> that's right you do now as we're fully satisfied. Satisfied. <laughs> that's right so what do we do we got the, the 
motor mount on. We hung the engine. The nose wheel spacer. Uh, that was the nose wheel spacer. Yes. We did okay. the nose wheel spacer. Yeah, that was, that was something in itself because we definitely yes. wanted that extra little bit of well, clearance for the prop. We fly and, off a grass field. And, yeah. and you wouldn't have known that those two bolts that you could you could make On the them side, fit. that you can actually cut out a piece and still make those fit. So that was another little thing I mm -hmm. would have oh, been. And we got the heater, which is going to be wonderful. That's right. Right. It's a little chilly in here. We, we, we did the heat. Weather turn. We got the heater. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, can you believe how we're like at Christmas, right? We're like 10 days from Christmas, eight days from Christmas. And when we came here, it was like 80 degrees during the day and yeah, 40 at night, but that's perfect for hot tubs. But then uh, now it's a little bit of payback tonight because we're, it's dropping quickly out there. Yeah. So we got the throttles, dual throttles on. Oh, and those little throttle brackets. You guys need to advertise those. Those are slick right there. Well, you can use that. I mean, if you have a Viking or some other like little training engine, uh, like a Rotax or something, you could still use those those brackets. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. uh, we got seat belts. Seat belts. Um, um, you rerouted the fuel system for us. We decided we didn't want it coming down the center, so uh, rerouted that. Um, yeah. Oh, we do have that little problem with the brakes. Not how to bleed that with John Croak's real inexpensive, cheapo, no good, uh, really good uh, brake bleeder <laughs> pumper thing. Yes. Thank you, John. Your video. <laughs> Actually, we all love, and I hear that everywhere we go, I couldn't have built it without the uh, John. No, John Croak's video. No, the home build help. Very beginning, yeah. Alan called and he answered his phone yeah. and talked to him. We got the videos before we ever got the kit. John is great. Yep. yep. That's right. And, and then your the, YouTubes are wonderful too. We go back and forth and, and watch all of those. That's and, right. Yep. Well, that's great. Now, we, we, we appreciate all the compliments. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I wish, um, you know, my own personality um, that I, you know, I sometimes slow down. And it's like, you know, somebody said something really nice. I mean, I try to absorb that and, they, and all <laughs> that. But, yeah, I take it in a little bit because, you know, because that's nice. It's really nice. That's what it's about. Now, your brake fitting that you were talking about. Uh, I guess for the other people that are building these airplanes, the only thing that was kind of a got you there was once you had a 90 degree fitting from Mapco, if you put a wrench on it and you turned it, it was very easy to damage the threads and bend that fitting. Mm -hmm. And that's what we learned. And we saw that together. Mm -hmm. And now uh, we lucked out because we, after like three hours of driving through <laughs> Texas, we found, <laughs> we, found we found a place that had 90 degree Matco fittings. Yeah, <laughs> well, we definitely we, we we talked about the fuel tanks. I mean, you were talking about the fuel tanks, and you sent them over to Viking, and we put on some like little like fittings for you, so you could put in uh, well, basically different fuel senders on top. Why why that? I mean, we we understand why you did it, but uh, what made you do it? Because I don't like anything penetrating the side of the tank. And I mean, I know they've done that in the past, but I don't like those little Volkswagen senders that Zenith sent. So it's just a, like you, you just thought from your previous experience that uh, I love this plane. It's a great kit and everything, but that, that's one thing that I'm not 100% on. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get something different. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm sure the people who know what they're doing when they're cutting holes in aluminum tanks probably wouldn't have a problem in the world. Other people have done it with no problem. I'm just uncomfortable. Right. So I didn't want to have to buy a new tank or two. Yeah. Right. You know? and, but that's that's on me. So but, I chose to do something a little more high-end, and it turns out you've got the thing. And Now, you were also the first to receive the uh, new radiator shroud with the with the Viking letters on it yes. and, and a new cowling. How did that all work out? That's right. It's very nice. It's very impressive. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Letters should have been a little lower, though, huh? A little lower. They need lower. to be lower than the next one and <laughs> parallel with the bottom, but that's it's a minor. Yeah, the, it's the a very minor thing. Nothing you would. <laughs> nothing you'd see at four thousand feet. <laughs> that's true. That is very impressive. I like the way it you looks. Know, and I like the larger radiator. We're in Texas. It gets hot here in the summer. We did struggle a little bit with the cowling. You and me worked on that, Alan. That took us all day. Just to yeah. Uh, well, the bottom we did pretty good. It got it all lined up nice. And then today we, we, we struggled a little bit with the top. Um, and again, there's no way I could have done that without mm -hmm. some knowledge. I, there's just no way. And I think, uh, you know, just to... to, to um, 
express what I feel about that when I see something like that and I'm in the field and I'm, I'm installing something that the customer eventually has to install. Um, I just feel like it's, it's an obligation that we have and, and uh, something that we pride ourselves in that when we see something that's not perfect, that could be aligned a little bit better and so forth, uh, the first thing we do is when we get home is we think about it and we, we, we would tweak that mold and uh, and iron out that curve and make sure that the next cowling that goes on will fit a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So that's something that, you know, I think because we have passion in what we do and we love the Zenit airplanes and we love the our engines and we fly our own engines all over the country and we do our own installs. So every time we do an installation, we realize, well, you know, if we if we sent out this fitting instead of that fitting or that clamp instead of this type of clamp and and if we had a, a template for where you drill the exhaust and and we constantly do that and I don't think any other engine company does that I mean most people are interested in just like put an engine in a box and ship it to you and you're kind of on your own so that's something that we pride ourselves in and think people, a lot of people stop it good enough and I think that is something that we do that a lot of people do appreciate is that we are continuing to improve and and people are okay you know if we have something that makes it easier for them in the long run you know everything you have is still perfect and works great but you have the opportunity to also do this as well because we're not going to stop improving where there's room for improvement so of course you we we get um customers that after two years that well you know I have a 2017 engine and, and I can see now you're doing the 2019 engine and it has this different thing over here can you send that to me you know and then I guess we always just tell them like you know if you bought an iPad in 2017 and you went to Walmart to get the 2019 would they just like give it to you so <laughs> so so things uh things will continue to improve we will always use the latest of Honda engines uh, Mitsubishi engines we'll always have the latest and greatest we'll cut for us the fun of this is like uh, Alyssa is saying building a community around what we do the love of aviation uh, and then for me being a designer of these products uh continuing to explore the latest in automotive technology and convert it into aircraft engines so i have a lot of fun doing it Alyssa, do you have a lot of fun doing yeah, it yeah you know what uh, no i do I, I have i have a lot of fun doing this in in every aspect in every way no matter how many weekends and hours we put in because we do it's it's a lot of fun Okay. And Alan, did you have fun this time uh, during I the installation? I had a great time. I feel I don't want it to end. No, no, <laughs> I really don't. No, 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 we've enjoyed I, having yeah. you. The most fun, I think, was today when y'all rolled it out and started it up for yeah. the first time. Yeah. And just that to hear just it sounded yeah. great. It was awesome. Yeah. That was cool. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And, uh, and uh, we had a great time with you. We did, too. Thank you. Thank you.